Lionel Messi has never been closer to leaving Barcelona. Arguably the greatest footballer of all time and the epitome of a one-club man. So how's it come to this? Where could he go? And what can Barcelona do to keep hold of their star player? We spoke in June ahead of the restart and the situation at Barcelona was in disarray. It's safe to say Messi was unhappy at that stage and there's been nothing that's happened since then to kind of change things, is it really? No, not at all. If anything, he's even more despondent than he was back when we spoke ahead of the restart. Uh, and understandably so. We said back then uh, Barcelona had a chance of winning the league because they had Messi. Basically, it was all going to come down to him. He had to carry the team forward as per usual. Uh, but we quickly realised that the situation is even more grave than we, we thought. All the, the talk behind the scenes, they, they were trying to blame this, they were trying to blame that. Bartomeu was talking about, you know, VAR decisions went against them in the Liga race. And all these things that, and then they were blaming the financial problems on the pandemic. The pandemic, the end of the season, everything has conspired to expose the problems at Barcelona. And Messi, for all, yeah, for all his genius, for all the, the miraculous things they can do on a football field, uh, can't account for this kind of gross mismanagement at the highest level of the club. Very bad times are arriving in Barcelona and even if it is true that Messi has hot blood and uses to be very angry after all uh, his defeats, this time something uh, has really broken. Um, let's see if uh, Messi is happy uh, after this soft change. Primero no sé si tengo que, si tengo que convencer a Messi, no sé si es sí o no, no sé. Y claro, que es el mejor jugador del mundo y el mejor jugador del mundo quieres tener en tu equipo y no quieres tener en el equipo contrario. Humans just come in, came in last week. It's obviously a very difficult situation for him, but do you think he's going to be able to rebuild the relationship between Messi and the club? Is it is it enough for one man to do? Mm, I don't think it's enough for him because if Messi expects some kind of changes in the board, uh, Kuman is, is not the one uh, with the authority and the power for, for executing those changes. It is true that Kuman has uh, enough strength for convincing anybody in Barcelona because he is Ronald Kuman, the, the scorer of the, of the goal which brought to Barcelona the first Champions League. Nobody can discuss him, but of course, nobody can expect him to be the next Pep Guardiola. Is there a connection between what Guardiola does at Manchester City and what Messi might do at, at, at Barcelona? I think so. I think so, Mark. Indeed, everyone is speaking about, about Inter. Uh, well, I don't think Messi will leave Barcelona for joining an ultra-defensive Inter, the, the one by Antonio Conte. Let's see. But uh, I'm pretty sure that if Messi agrees to leave, decides to leave, it's because he wants another Champions League as soon as possible. And I don't see Inter as one of the main challengers for the next season. Instead, uh, I know that nobody knows Messi better than Guardiola. Messi knows that, Guardiola knows that. Uh, Inter is not ready for paying a high amount to Barcelona, but Man City should be. So I'm pretty sure that if Messi leaves, he would go not to City, to where Guardiola is. Is he at the right stage of his career? Could he go to, say, Man City or Inter Milan and adjust with his family as well as in a footballing sense and thrive and get, like Ignacy said, get that elusive last Champions League medal? Yeah, I mean, even at 33, I think he's an exceptional talent. As you said, he's not really, he's not really one of us. He's not immortal. He's, he's always been this extraterrestrial. Um, I don't doubt his quality. And also, can you imagine putting him in that Manchester City team? I think the Inter one, uh, again, as Ignacy pointed out, they're very excited about it over here. There's just constant paper talk about buying an apartments in Milan and preparing the way, you know, paving the way to, to, to move to, to, to San Siro. But again, I don't see it because you, you look at Antonio Conte and how demanding he is and how relentless he is and how obsessive he is and how he, would, he wants every single player to work so hard. And I just don't see where he puts Messi into that team because... It, Christian Eriksen, there's no place for him in that team because he, he has, he's, he's struggled to adapt, he's struggled to... I mean, so that's a guy to me that, yeah, has, has some vision and, and skill. There's a lot for Messi to ponder and, and 
and he really he'll be ruminating over whether the changes he wants, the widespread change that PK also called for, are really going to be implemented if 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 the president doesn't if it doesn't change. We know that Ronald Koeman's got a huge job on his hands as he comes in, and he can't be guaranteed of a long-term future in any kind of sense. But looking at the short term, what can he do to the team? Who can he bring in? Who can he bring through to try and sort of salvage Messi's final years, Messi's twilight years at the club, if he stays? Best thing, uh, and I think he's the perfect man for, for that, is finding a real job, a real role for Frankie de Jong. In that uh, aspect, I think that Barcelona will mutate the traditional 4-3-3 uh, for playing with a uh, uh, double mid-center, probably uh, Roberto and, and de Jong. Just like Netherlands has been playing in, in the last seasons, Alba, Busquets uh, are not at the top level, probably Luis Suarez neither, so I think that uh, Kuman will have to build a display for, for making that these weaknesses uh, doesn't make Barcelona that weak anymore. I'm not saying that uh, Messi uh, would like to see Bartomeu out, but he wants a deep restructuration of the model because he understands that decisions could be taken in a better way. Of course, Messi should learn as well that if he's earning 50 million euro after taxes per season, uh, that means a big obstacle, a big ban for joining new average players. And if he wants Neymar to be back, he must understand that the funds uh, are not infinite, that uh, there are some balances to equilibrate. Barcelona is in the middle of the perfect storm in the institutional aspect, in the sports chapter, in thinking on the financial thing. I don't think that Barcelona is going to be strong enough for rebuilding itself and challenging for the big titles the next season. After the election, before June 2021, let's see because it's going to be uh, a stormy summer for Barcelona. For a player like Lionel Messi, the term his prime doesn't seem to apply because the line just goes up here. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to drop. So the, the idea that these years, it's crazy to think that there's a possibility that they might have been wasted. Yeah, it's, it's scandalous really when you think about it, given you, they've, they've been blessed, uh, so fortunate to have this guy since he was a since he was a kid, and they, what should have been you know culminating in, in him maybe winning six seven Champions Leagues, they they they've wasted the last few years. It's it's there's no getting away from that's inexcusable. But at least at the very least, as a president or as a club, it's your responsibility to have a clear coherent strategy. And they don't. They, Barcelona don't seem to have that. We see the scattergun approach to transfers. So it's a farce, and it's it's just it's all of their own making. That's the thing. When I was watching the game last week. And they were being beaten 8-2. And it wasn't a surprise. That stood out for me more than anything. It was actually, we could see it coming. If you've watched Barcelona for a year or two years, you, you saw this coming. Coutinho, they overpaid for him. They didn't know where to put him. He comes on and he scores, what, two goals in this, and he sets up a goal at the end of the game. And you're just thinking, this symbolises Barcelona's recklessness and their waste and their incompetence and their arrogance. That he was started the game on the opposition bench and their two other most expensive players started on the Barcelona bench. So this it tells you everything, everything. It perfectly symbolizes how, ma how mismanaged the club has been and the, the failings ultimately of Bartomeu and the board over the past few years. They, they had it coming, they deserved this. Messi didn't and neither did the fans. 